Hi, I'm Reed Holson. Welcome to Ask the Mayor on the first official day of autumn. We're downtown Sioux Falls, right behind the 8th and Railroad Center, and behind Mayor Huther is our railroad redevelopment project that's finally come to fruition, Mayor Huther. Been talking about it since 2005, and it's going to happen. Uh, we were able to ink the deal with Burlington Northern on behalf of the people of America, and uh, just really, really pleased about it. Uh, I mean, we're going to have 10 acres of land uh, much of what you can see behind me that uh, we are going to redevelop uh, just to, to take our downtown even greater heights, uh, create more economic development opportunities, and yes, great quality of life and, and so much more. Just just thrilled. It's taken us a long time to get here, a uh, number of years. Final price was approximately $27 million, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, we were very, very fortunate. Uh, thanks to the work of Senator Tim Johnson and Senator John Thune and so many others, uh, we were able to secure a, a federal earmark back in 2005. And so with those dollars, we're able to purchase this land uh, from Burlington Northern. And yes, it was a very, very difficult project. In fact, I've called it probably the most difficult and most convoluted that I've had uh, as your mayor. But oh my goodness, uh, the effort's been worth it. And someday, Reed, uh, you know, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, 200 years from now, uh, all that work um, will, 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 will be all worth it because this downtown is going to evolve in such a special way right here on this 10 acres of land that we purchased from BNSF. And really the beginning of Sioux Falls was the railroad. That's why we're here. The railroad and the yes. river came through. So you call this one of the biggest, most historic things that has ever happened for the city. Why is that? Well, I, I do. Uh, I, I think it's one of those things that, you know, long after, you know, we pass away, Reed, uh, this land is going to be here, the development upon it is going to be here, and it's going to keep making a, a huge economic development difference for our city, and yes, quality of life difference. You know, even the event center, and that was, that was a big, big deal for our town, uh, that's going to last 50, 60, 70 years. This particular project, this development is going to last for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And so, yeah, I, I think it's uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, in, in our city. Help us visualize what might be possible here, because as we drive by on 8th Street, all we see is crossings and trains yeah. and, and gravel. Well, I, I truly, uh, it's, it's whatever the dreamers and the investors and the developers and, and the citizens of, of Sioux Falls believe it can be. Uh, it is 10 acres of land. It's right in the heart of our downtown. Uh, it really can be something special, but I do think it'll be a, you know, a place to work, a uh, place to live, a uh, place to play, and again, I, I think it can be just whatever we want it to be. Um, you know, I, I, I personally, I've, I've had the, uh, the, the, the pleasure of traveling around the world, and, and I've seen these unique city centers in, in Europe, for example, where, where it truly is. It's a, it's a combination of a of a beautiful green space with magnificent buildings around it where people gather uh, to, again, to live, work, and play. And, and that's something that I'd love to see. But again, I just am one voice. And uh, ultimately, it'll be the citizens of this town that'll decide, and it's just going to be grand. What's the timeline to get things going? Well, uh, we did ink the deal, and now we just have to close, uh, close it. And that'll be about probably six months or so. But I know our, our partners at BNSF, they're, they're enthused to get it done too. Then once that's finalized, uh, BNSF will have about two years where they can remove these railroad tracks that you see behind us, all but, but two, those that are on the far east. Uh, then probably about 18 months from now, we'll really start uh, uh, to engage the public uh, by creating what we'll call an RFP or two or three uh, and, and we'll take these parcels of land and, and we'll get ideas from, again, these developers and dreamers and investors. And, and then, uh, we'll, you know, we'll see, we'll see what comes out of it. Uh, I, I, I don't think that the city is in a big, big hurry. We want to do it right. Uh, we want it to be special. And I think that what you're going to see is probably within the next 18 to 24 months, we'll probably have one of our first shovels in the ground and that'll be fun. That's going to be exciting. Yes. Let's go out to the Premier Center. Recently we had a settlement on the, uh, yes. the siting issue at the Premier Center. Yes. Uh, another topic that's been going on for, for a while. In fact, the one year anniversary of, our, of the opening of our event center is, is actually this week. 
But, uh, you know, I think as the people know, there were some, some things that we saw aesthetically on the outside of the building that we just weren't quite satisfied with. So uh, what we did is we worked with uh, those, those folks who helped us build it to try to come up with a settlement that would allow us to, uh, uh, to really, you know, to, to move on. And uh, we've done that. We've reached a settlement with uh, the parties that were involved in, in building our event center, those, those, uh, those outside panels in the amount of $1 million. Uh, now we'll take that money and we'll utilize it for um, you know, other things to, to make our event center even more grand. Uh, also, we're very, very confident uh, that the, uh, the metal panels that are there, uh, they serve the purpose very, very well. Uh, so again, structurally, it's, it's grand. Uh, we think it's in a beautiful event center inside and out. But now we will take this million dollars and we'll do something special with that too. And, and also, the people of Sioux Falls need to know, we're not going to just spend it to spend it. Uh, we'll, we'll find those things that we need to do uh, to take our event center, maybe even to a higher level of performance. And then we'll spend that money uh, when the timing's right. So are you pleased after a year of operation? Anything you would have changed or thought, well, we should have done that differently? Well, Reed, um, I don't know if you can imagine this. We've had 633,000 plus people that have gone through the doors of our event center. And it uh, just seems like yesterday, but you know, 12 sellout shows, uh, the Storm win their championship, the Stampede win their conference championship, the Summit League, my goodness, was across, was uh, you know, all across America raving about our event center and our fans and, and, and the athletes and so much more. Uh, after six months, we made $1 million in, in net profits. Uh, and I think we're going to do more than that. We'll make that announcement soon. I just, I, th I think the thing that, that I'm told by, just a bevy of memories. Uh, so many great things that have happened uh, in the spirit of, you know, economic development again, quality of life, and just creating uh, uh, special memories for people that live in Sioux Falls and, and around. Uh, we had some challenges, no doubt. You know, we were trying to educate people about, um, you know, the, the importance of, of getting there early or getting your tickets early. Uh, that's probably been the biggest issue. There's such an a incredible, insatiable demand to get in there that sometimes these shows, as hot as they are, it's been hard to get tickets. Uh, but even there, you know, that's quieted down too. But, but you know, even though we had a great year, uh, I think the best days are yet to come for our new event center. Well, that's exciting to hear. Thank you. It's the, the industry is, is really lauded. The building is one of the best new buildings in, in, in the country, really, for hosting exhibitions and concerts. Yes, in fact, a uh, very, very important um, a group that's involved in concerts and entertainment all across the world, uh, Polestar, they actually named the Denny Sanford Premier Center one of the top five in the world. Uh, it was nominated to, uh, to to be the best in the world. Even though we didn't get that designation, still, we've just had rave reviews in so many ways, uh, not only from those who follow the industry, but uh, we've also had these incredible reviews from people that have come in to do our shows. Because um, again, this is such a, a functional building. It's so efficient, so productive, uh, so grand. Uh, the audio is great. The video is great. Uh, getting the trucks in and out has been great. And of course, our fans have been phenomenal. Uh, and, and that word is spreading. And that's probably why we're getting uh, groups like, you know, Jason Aldean, uh, the Eagles, uh, professional bull riding, Elton John, Shania Twain, and so much more coming to our event center. Uh, I mean, we're, we're certainly growing up as a city and and uh, with, with events like this, I think it's just the beginning. Nice to drive a few miles rather than a hundred of miles to, to catch some of those acts. Well, and I, I think that's, that's probably a, a, the, one of the biggest things, Reed, is that, you know, we don't have to go to Omaha anymore or Fargo or Minneapolis or Sioux City uh, to see some of these big shows. Uh, we can see them right here in Sioux Falls. And, you know, I'm going to be a little selfish because I am the mayor, but, you know, having people spend their money in Sioux Falls to see a show, uh, that's what makes this economy run. That's what helps pay for our, our roads and our, our libraries and our police team and our fire team. 
we need those sales tax dollars coming in and the Denny Sanford Premier Center is certainly generating a, a large chunk of those as well as all the places around our town, whether it be a hotel or a restaurant or a bar or, you know, filling gas or buying a new truck. That's all happening in Sioux Falls uh, right before the Eagles concert and after the Eagles concert. So I love it. Let's talk about the budget. The budget recently passed by the council. You're yeah. all done for the, the biggest budget that the city has ever seen. Uh, kind of reflective of the growth of the town. Yeah, and and you know we're not we're not celebrating that it's the largest uh, budget in our city's history, but reality is uh, it is a booming town. Uh, it is a growing town. When you have three to four thousand people moving here every year, uh, that's basically the equivalent of building a Yankton, South Dakota, about every four years. You are going to have to spend more money to keep up with that uh, with that growth and. And thank goodness we've got the sales tax dollars coming in, the property tax dollars coming in, and that allows us to, to, to you know, keep up with that growth. But with the help of all the city employees, the department heads, the finance team, and yes, our city council, uh, I think we've been very, very prudent, uh, very responsible uh, with the dollars that we are blessed with. And uh, we just passed a, a great budget. And, and I think, uh, uh, the city council, their changes or their uh, little tweaks to the to the budget, I think, was also a testament to how much they they do trust uh, the the city team, uh, the department heads, and maybe even you know this mayor a little bit that we are doing it on the, on the on behalf of the people that we serve and that we care about and. And the city council certainly has played a big role in, in, in that as well. There really weren't a lot of tweaks or amendments from the no. council this particular year, just a, just a few. You know, and, and that's been the pattern. Uh, and I think that's great. There were some tweaks, and, and I, I respect it. Um, you know, not we've all got different ideas on what's the best way to spend taxpayer dollars. But you've got eight city councilors. Uh, they are entrusted to really approve these dollars that ultimately will be spent. Uh, and then the executive branch, our, our role is to, is to spend them very, very wisely, to execute these projects uh, in, in the most efficient and productive way that we can. Uh, there were some, some tweaks, but, to, but not a lot. And I just think that that's, uh, that just kind of shows we are working in collaboration, uh, working in teamwork, and yes, communicating very, very well on behalf of the people that we serve. And you're still on track for that uh, possible new administration building for the, for the city. The, we are, and, and I'm so pleased that the council is a rallied behind this as well. Now again, nothing has been finalized, uh, uh, nothing has, but again, we're taking these steps, uh, communicating more and more, doing more and more due diligence, and the city council certainly are right either beside us or they're in front of us on this journey. But ultimately, I, I am pleased that the council uh, is, is working with us in, in the spirit of ultimately building a new city building for our employees. Because, you know, Sioux Falls, I gotta tell you, uh, this isn't a new topic either. We've been talking about needing more space uh, for this growing city government that we have uh, to provide a a great place for our city employees to work, uh, to provide an efficient place for taxpayers to come to, to, to do the city business. And uh, ultimately, I hope that we can get that done here and, and uh, I like our plan, uh, but I know the council still got some, some questions and they should and we'll work with them to answer those questions uh, along the journey. And just so everybody can visualize, we're talking about this building possibly being right across the main library yes. next to the parking ramp. It uh, is, as well as uh, uh, I, th we've got our park, we've got a library, we've got a parking ramp. We It's right smack dab in the middle of all these government functions that are happening with, with the county and the city. So we actually think the location is just, is just wonderful. Uh, we also think that it'll take that, that part of town and really help it, uh, you know, kind of stimulate it to, to take that economic development to a new level in that area too. Uh, so again, more to come. Uh, we'll keep the city council engaged the entire way along with the taxpayers. And ultimately, there's probably uh, two to three more steps to go before we ever you know, get ready to put that shovel in the ground. Uh, but I like the progress that we're making and just really proud of the council as well that they're 
you know, they're, they're right with us in this journey. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk to the mayor about where we're at in our building permits. Is it going to be another record-breaking year? We're going to find out the possibilities when we come back and ask the mayor. Hi, I'm Dr. Lindsay Hansen at Falls Community Health. With the recent measles outbreak here in South Dakota, I wanted to take a moment to remind you that measles is a preventable disease. The virus is highly contagious, but vaccination works very well, up to 97% effective against measles. Three out of 10 people with measles develop complications from it, which can be severe. If you are unsure if you've been vaccinated, don't hesitate to call your doctor with questions. Welcome back to Ask the Mayor. If you want to get in touch with the mayor, send questions for this program. Send them to askthemayor at siouxfalls.org. Just click on the mayor's office and a great way to communicate with us here on Ask the Mayor and any show on CityLink as well. So we're downtown. 8th and Railroad Center is right over here. Lots of great shopping. You almost cross the border yeah. and you cross over here and it becomes more industrial and rail. This is going to change with this railroad redevelopment project. Well, uh, Sioux Falls, if, if, if you've not been downtown lately, you need to get down here because it's already changed in a magnificent way with um, you know phase one, phase two of the River Greenway. Uh, we tore down the old parking ramp and you've got these magnificent places to work and, and live and play. Uh, Eighth and Railroad and all these older buildings around us are just, uh, just hopping right now. Uh, but to your point, Reed, we've got these, uh, these 10 acres of land that ultimately are just gonna just be magnificent as well in terms of you know the things that we can do uh, so I, I just I just can't wait uh, to, to see what ultimately is going to happen I obviously you know the bulk of these buildings are going to come up after I'm done being the mayor but that but that foundation is now laid uh, it is we'll uh, we'll clear out these tracks and then we'll start putting shovels in the ground and making good things happen for the people that we serve well, building permits. Are yes. we going to set another record again this year? Was it been three years in a row we've set records? Each year we were surprised. I guarantee it's a strong word, but uh, I almost have to guarantee it. It's going to be a record-breaking year for our city again for construction. You know, record breaker, record breaker, record breaker. We're blowing it away. Uh, it's September. And the numbers look like they're just we're just going to blow away our, our city's record record when it comes to construction and and it's it's every, it's, it's just a combination of everything uh, you know it's pe people building places to live is probably the biggest thing you know apartments and and condos and things like that but also uh, from a re a retail side that's been a great thing too new stores uh, popping up new places to work. Uh, and then, yes, that confidence that people have in terms of repairing their home, adding on to their home, or building that home, uh, it's just phenomenal right now. And uh, our, one of our greatest challenges, of course, is uh, you know, finding workforce uh, to build those homes, but, but ultimately uh, we're working on that too. It's going to be incredible, isn't it, when I-90 is hooked up on the east side and that east side and Highway 100 belt line is continued? The growth is even going to follow even greater. Well, it will, and and uh, you know, you you throw in, uh, we've got the levee system now that that uh, uh, that that's been approved in terms of the new flood zone maps that we'll have coming soon. There's all those projects, you know, kind of waiting on the shelf. Uh, you've got dreamers that are looking to, you know, invest in this ten, ten acres of land. They're already dreaming big. That's sitting on the shelf, like you said, Reed. You've got Highway 100 or Veterans Parkway that is going to go around our entire city. There's all that development that's just waiting on the shelf. And so again, I know we've gone boom and boom and boom, but I think there's more booms to come uh, for, for this great city. And, and I don't see it slowing down. I, I really don't. Let's talk about your new leadership uh, team that's over at the police department. Uh, with a number of retirements lately, uh, it's really kind of transformed who's, who's leading our police department. Well, I'm a huge fan of uh, Chief Barthel. I, I am, and, and I'm going to miss him, and I know that the, uh, the people of Sioux Falls will miss him too. But you know what? He's going to pursue uh, his life's dream, and, and I, I commend him for that. But this man, uh, Doug Barthel, he's, he's built a team around him that also is, is raring and ready to go in terms of leadership. Uh, you know, Matt Burns will be our, our new chief. And then you got Galen Schmidt waiting in the wings to be our assistant chief. 
And those two men working side by side, uh, they're, they're going to take our police team to an, a whole new level. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll think of some new ideas and they'll lead in a different way and, and they'll take risks and you bet they're going to make some mistakes every now and then. And I love it. I love it. But uh, they've got some energy. They've got some spirit. Uh, they certainly have a ton of heart and guts. And ultimately, uh, our, our police is in good hands. And, uh, but I just can't wait for, for the future, too. You know, Mayor Munson... When you look back at his legacy, he did some good things. He, he really, really did. But I think one of the one of the best was, you know, he was able to to uh, take that risk on on Chief Barthel and and Patty Lyons. And boy, did he make good moves? He did. And and uh, our our people have been able to sleep soundly and safely uh, because of the decisions that he made. And I'm hoping. Uh, well, not only hoping, I know that the decisions that I've made with uh, uh, Galen and, and with Matt, uh, they're, they're good ones too. And in Sioux Falls, you can sleep sound knowing that your, your city's gonna be safe. Well, you've talked about not being able to grow unless you have enough water resources. You recently held the big uh, Sioux River, yeah. River Summit up yes. in Brookings this year. You went out of Sioux Falls and went up north, North Stream a little bit. It, it was great. Uh, the biggest turnout we've ever had since we've uh, been doing this, this summit. Um, and again, not only does Sioux Falls have to care about the, the Big Sioux River and the tributaries that, that go into it, but this Big Sioux River uh, goes, goes north and it goes south. And there are mayors and towns and cities all along the Big Sioux River. And so, yeah, we did expand our reach. We went up to Brookings and, and it was just phenomenal. Uh, I just love how, you know, we talked about the goods and the bads. And you bet some of these challenges that we face in terms of making our Big Sioux River, river um, you know, even even a, a, a stronger source of source of water. Uh, but we're going to keep doing that. In fact, there's even talk about now maybe even going up to Watertown and, and Summit in, in that area. Uh, but we are making progress. We are getting some things done. And ultimately, I think that the great thing uh, is that we're talking about this stuff. We're talking about it, and uh, you know these tough these tough challenges. You can put your head in the sand all day, or but more importantly, I think let's talk about it and ultimately uh, you know uh, uh, tackle these things head on. What did you hear about the environment in and around the river during this summit? Grasses and yeah. native fauna, and everything around it. Well, uh, this is a topic that's being covered all over the the nation, and especially here in the Midwest, but. Uh, one of the hot topics, of course, are, are buffer zones, and, and that's, uh, that's the area of land, you know, that, that surrounds these, uh, these tributaries, these rivers, these creeks, and so buffer zones is a big, big deal, and, and the, the more buffers that you can put between, um, you know, your, your river or your tributaries and, and, and probably potentially these pollutants that, that can pollute it, it it's, it's, it's really good. It does good things, and so... Uh, again, having uh, you know larger grasses or these these buffers really really helps you uh, uh, to to ensure that your water stays clean. Well, we had a lot of water in August with that torrential downpour the rain that happened. How how did we do in that storm? Did the infrastructure hold up? The changes that we made. And Reed, this is uh, almost hard for me to even fathom saying, but we actually had a flood in Sioux Falls. I mean, uh, uh, we talked about a flood in Sioux Falls, and yes, uh, even with that record rainfall that, that came upon us in such a short period of time, this in investment that we put into infrastructure in our town, it really paid off big time. Now, certainly there were some cars that were damaged and there were some homes that had some water in it, but not nearly what we thought uh, would happen with such a, a, a terrible storm that, that Mother Nature brought upon us. Uh, but we're going to keep investing, uh, keep learning. Uh, we found some weak spots still within our infrastructure, and ultimately, um, you know, we'll 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 make those stronger too. But but uh, it tested us, Sioux Falls. It definitely did. Uh, and Reed, to be to be fair, this is my third 100-year rain event since I've been mayor. Uh, I mean, these are supposed to happen every 100 years, and we've had we've had three in five. 
Uh, so something's going on, and Sioux Falls needs to be ready, and, and I think we are. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, you have experts in public works that are talking to the weather service. I mean, any 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 input on why we're getting these types of events more often? Well, the reality is is that we are getting them more often. I mean, there are there are changes that are happening within our climate in, in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota and, and across America. And with that, we need to be ready. We need to adjust, and, and that's what we're doing here in Sioux Falls. And, and again, these infrastructure investments that we're making, they are unbelievably expensive. Uh, and they may not be as fun as, as an event center or a Washington Pavilion or a new library, but they're incredibly important. And uh, so again, uh, these things that we can see above the ground, you know, we'll, we'll celebrate those. But Sioux Falls, let's celebrate the things that we're doing under the ground too. Water lines, sanitary sewer lines, and, and so much more because it'll help us for that next uh, a rain event that is sure to come. All right. Mayor, thank you for your time. Thanks so much, Reed. All make right. it a great day. All right. You make it a great day as well, too. In downtown Sioux Falls, you can see the changes are going to be coming. If you want to watch and see what's going to be happening near the 8th and Railroad Center and in this railroad redevelopment plan, you can track it all on our website at SiouxFalls.org and also keep track of our city council meetings and lots of on-demand video, too. On behalf of Mayor Huther, I'm Reed Holson. Thank you again for watching Ask the Mayor.